Hello there ladies and gentlemen, I'm Paul TX14 and Walsh and welcome to an all new World of Warships gameplay. In this episode I'll be saying out in the tier 8 German destroyer known as the Z23 in a tier 10 domination battle on the map Greece. As I analyse the gameplay, I would like to draw your attention to two main areas for discussion. Number 1, Space Utilisation. Throughout the battle I'll be trying to make the most of the empty space available to me to position my ship well ahead of my team's fleet. And number 2, Spotting pressure. Where possible, I plan to keep the enemy's larger ships, i.e. their heavy cruisers and battleships, constantly spotted so that my team has the initiative. With the forward covered, let us get into the gameplay. As we load into the match and look at the team sheet, the one thing that comes immediately to my mind is the fact that the enemy team have two radar cruisers, a Cleveland and a Salem, with radar ranges of 9km and 8.5km respectively from what I recall. Now the good news about these ships is that they cannot mirror their radar range to their detectability by sea, where they're going to be spotted by my ship before they can use their radar range in order to detect my ship. So if I can keep these enemy ships at the extremity of spotting distance, then they won't be able to use their radar in order to spot me in return. And if I can play my cards right, I can get these ships eliminated by using my teammates to shoot them down before they've even had the chance to turn their guns on me and return fire. As we make our way northward to start this game, you'll know that I have been spotted by the radio position finder of an enemy ship. I've got the located symbol at the moment. I'm keeping an eye on this and wondering if it's going to switch off of my ship. If it does, what that will tell me is that it's probably switched towards the Lightning, who on our team is going immediately from the centre bottom of the map up towards the southern side of Objective Bravo. And that would mean that the enemy ship with RPF is also heading towards Bravo. Alternatively, if it stays on me, then I get the feeling it'll be an enemy destroyer who's trying to make their way into the open water that I plan to contest in Grid Squares Echo 8, Echo 9, Foxtrot 8 and Foxtrot 9. And as we're about to come into Foxtrot 9 here, we're going to see that the RPF indicator switches off of my ship and probably onto our Lightning, and that confirms to me that whatever's going to contest Bravo is the ship that has RPF. And as we make our way into the open water here, one thing I have to keep in mind is that the detectability of the Z23 is not the best at its tier. The best possible concealment is 6.2km, i.e. the concealment expert plus the concealment systems modification, but still, this is reasonable given the fact that this ship does have a top speed of 37 knots without the application of a speed flag or the speed boost, so we can close the distance to more well-concealed ships if we're going head-to-head, -head. alternatively we can use our speed to run away with the addition of the speed boost and we do have 22,300 HP to utilise in order to tank some damage along the way, one of us running the Survivability Expert Captain skill at Tier 3. Now in the open water I'm not being contested by an enemy destroyer at the moment, and instead I'm able to spot both the Salem and the Massachusetts on the enemy team, two significant ships which are out of position right now, particularly the Salem, that wants to get close to land masses and push forward get in close range, because then it can use this very powerful armour piercing shells and high explosive shells with its rapid reload in order to wreak havoc with our team. But here the ship has already lost 10,000 HP and gone to a super hill without even being in position, and we're only two and a half minutes into the game. And that means that life of the Salem is going to be very difficult, and the Massachusetts is already pulling back. And with these two ships making their way initially towards Bravo, but now pulling northwards into their spawn, what this tells me is that Charlie is unguarded in terms of an objective, and I can make my way into Charlie uncontested, albeit there could be a destroyer between myself and these ships that I'm spotting at the moment, so I do have to keep that in mind as I'm making my way towards the objective, and sure enough, the enemy Yugumo materialises, and we're going to go head to head. Now do keep in mind I did spot the Yukuma at 6.1km which tells me they do not have concealment experts on their captain. But here they've drifted too close to my ship and I've activated my hydroacoustic search which spots ships out to 5km and I've immediately gone to smoke and cut my speed because this way that means I'm able to spot the Yukuma using my hydroacoustic search but I can use the concealment of a smoke screen here and my lack of speed in order to be able to return fire without them being able to see my ship. And as soon as they start to pull to 5km distance and further away, I'm going to come charging out of my smoke screen here to respot the enemy Yugumo, knowing that concealment is poor compared to what it can be at its maximum. I think it's approximately 5.5km, and that means we're able to go toe to toe with this ship and absolutely tear them to pieces with the support of our teammates. Now, if you're wondering why I've activated my speed boost here, it's so that way 
As I go further and further away from the Salem and the Massachusetts, and also the Yugumo to an extent, I can use the speed boost to get out of line of sight of the Salem, who's been eliminated by our friendly Turpits through the spotting we provided, already up to just shy of 40,000 spotting damage, we're now in the top right corner, and I can now use the speed boost to re-engage the Yugumo, who may be loitering around Charlie to try and ambush me with torpedoes, and I'm tying this in with the remaining time on the hydroacoustic search consumable, where I'll be able to spot torpedoes out to a distance of three and a half kilometers, so that way I'm going to see the torpedo coming as I make my push into Charlie in earnest. And we respot the Yagumo who seems to have not been able to repair their engine. Perhaps they have an untrained captain so they don't have last stand. Either they've just got the ship and they're putting the captain on there and retraining them. But the Yagumo is now out of the game which means we're able to take objective Charlie and we can continue to apply the pressure on the enemy Massachusetts who know is still being spotted by our ship all this time and the spotting damage in the top right corner is continually increasing. Now it's at this point that we need to take a breather. It would seem that the enemy team has abdicated Objective Charlie completely, and they seem to have congregated over towards Objective Alpha, or at least the northwestern corner of the map, with a small contest going on in Objective Bravo as well. But in return, what we have to keep in mind here is that just because we've won this flank does not mean that the game's won yet. We need to trigger the encirclement now in order to secure the win with our team. Now we do have a friendly Turpitz who is making their way up the eastern flank as well and gradually rotating along the 8 line into the 7 line to go after the Massachusetts and put the encirclement round on the enemy team with us. And we're going to be staying quite far ahead of our friendly Turpitz and utilising their firepower at a distance in order to wreak havoc with the enemy team. Now we can see an enemy Takao making its way towards us at this point and we're keeping the Massachusetts spotted as already mentioned and that means we can now keep another heavy cruiser permanently spotted plus the battleship from earlier permanently spotted and that Massachusetts has not really contributed to the match so far and we're going to make life unbearable for the Takao to the point that they're going to lose the ability to contribute to this match as well. In the meantime our team seem to have won the contest over objective Bravo and they're now securing it and in Top of that, we can also see that Objective Alpha right now is going quite silent. It seems as though there's a bit of a stalemate there, but hopefully this effort here should help turn the tables down around Objective Alpha. We're going deeper and deeper into enemy territory now. We're pushing into the enemy spawn, which is not always advised, but in this case, I think it's going to work out quite nicely because what we're doing is essentially creating a situation where the enemy team have nowhere to run. Instead, they're caught in this encirclement trap and we're throwing down our 9.5 km range torpedoes here, two sets of four, in order to try and deal some damage, some hidden damage, to enemy to Cal, or alternatively to Massachusetts if they decide to turn back. But these torpedoes have been targeted specifically at the heavy cruiser, on the basis that we can get one to hit, hopefully it will trigger some flooding, and that will take away their damage control party considerable, and in return we can subsequently set fires, or our teammates can set fires, which will burn for a longer period of time and drain the health of the ship down. Because our torpedoes can hit quite hard with a maximum damage of 14,400 and with their detection by sea only being 1.4km and combine that with a speed of 66 knots, these are quite lethal torpedoes. And we also have a reload of 90 seconds which is quite a nice reload at the tier of 8. I'm going to see one torpedo make its mark on the rear of the enemy to cow and that's enough to take off a quarter of their health completely and unfortunately the torpedoes don't quite reach to the Massachusetts, that would have been a golden opportunity but they made their mark, they hit the target we targeted, and by continually providing this spot in, it means our Turpitz is pushing further and further now up the map, rotating round, as we said, into the 7 line, and soon to be into the 6 line, so grid square, what would be a delta 6, and by doing this push, they're just applying more and more pressure, we also got a Kagero coming into the mix, from the south side, and here we open up with a little bit of armour piercing and a smoke screen on the enemy to cow. Now the reason for this is to deal some damage, we can see the lethality of our armour piercing shells there on our 150mm main batteries, but on top of that, we're using this smoke screen to lay down some torpedoes on the Massachusetts, and then we'll open fire on them, and we also want to use this smoke to bait the Takao to come back. Because whilst I'm going to be opening fire here on the Massachusetts, and I'm switching on my hydroacoustic search, and also my speed boost, we'll come back to those in a second, what I want the Takao to think is, ah, there's the enemy destroyer, it's revealing itself and it's getting very comfortable in playing its smoke to just harass the Massachusetts and toss a load of shells. So if the Takao now doubles back and comes charging towards my smoke, by the time my smoke runs out, which is quite a short duration smoke, we should note, the German smoke's being short duration, the Takao will get close enough so that way when I come out of my smoke, or alternatively, uh, my smoke just naturally runs out, then the Takao would be too close for me to be able to run away without taking significant damage from their high explosive shells as the Massachusetts takes two torpedoes there. But I've already encountered this by the fact that I've deployed my hydroacoustic search to see the torpedoes that the Takao may throw at me, one of them being eight, sorry, 10 kilometer torpedoes from the Takao. 
and I expected them to make their way back and as we leave our smoke quite prematurely we see the Takao is definitely on its way back, we called this right and now we're able to spot the Takao again without ever being spotted by them until we decide to open fire of our guns and that is very frustrating for that heavy cruiser player now because what they're having to do is essentially play into a situation where they're going to be playing up against a foe they never get to see and in return our turpits can just open fire on them constantly and Takao is going to be none the wiser to the fact that this destroyer IRZ-23 is going to be the one target they can never touch. So sitting here out in open water, we're just monitoring our relative position to the Takao. We never want to get too far away in case they decide to give us a full broadside and that way we can toss our armour piercing him. But in return, we're not getting too close to so that way. They eventually spot us by getting too close to our detectability range. And we can see here also by opening fire every so often, we're using priority target, the tier one captain skill to see how many ships target us. And we're being a bit of a nuisance here because we're trying to pull a little bit of attention off of our friendly turpits from some of the ships. It may not be the Takao that targets us. It may be some of the French battleships such as the Richelieu. Well, there's a pair of them. But we're just providing a situation whereby we've got a quote-unquote target-rich environment for the enemy team and they may choose to shoot at us rather than our turpits who has done a valiant job, they've done a fantastic job in this game and they've traded a lot of health to get to this situation and we're going to see the Takao does go down here but in return shortly our turpits is going to go down to the combined fire of the two French battleships. And it's really rinse and repeat at this point, we've already achieved a situation whereby we continuously spotted the enemy team in terms of the Massachusetts and the Takao and also the Salem much earlier on and now we're going to use this on the remnant enemy fleet. The two reach leaves in particular, the lead one who's coming charging towards us, our torpedoes have been designed to go to them. We're not expecting these to necessarily hit but they may make the reach leave turn broadside to evade the torpedoes and create an angle whereby they can be easily citadeled or severely damaged by some of our teammates who are coming up through objective alpha and objective bravo at this point. But on top of that, what I do have to keep in mind now is that whilst the game is almost won by the looks of things in terms of the score sheet, plus the fact that our team's got four objectives to the enemy zero, I am the lone ship now up towards Objective Charlie. I have no direct support. I don't have a Turpitz anymore who's able to support me at close range. So instead I'm tossing a load of shells into the exposed broadside that I reached you. I'm going to throw one quick salve at the enemy's Z23, see if we can get a good hit. Albeit this is at a very long range against a small nimble target. And whilst our gun range is all the way out to 10.8 kilometers, ideally we never really want to be engaging anyone beyond 8 kilometers because then our shells seem to drift quite a bit in the sky. We're getting a bit of attention off of the rear reach view, the one that's more heavily wounded. And also it seems as though the main reach view, the one with a lot of health, is now turning its guns towards us. So we're going to go to concealment very shortly after they get off one salvo and we'll dodge the majority of it, albeit taking one shell on the bow. High explosive shell dealing 1,700 damage approximately. As we pull back here to the northern side of Objective Charlie, we're just going to bait these ships along but keep them spotted. And if we take another look in the top right corner of our screen, we can see that our spotting damage is now in excess of 120,000. Or that's the equivalent of one tier 10 heavy cruiser, so the Salem, and on top of that, the combined health of the enemy Massachusetts after you factor in a good number of heals. So that's two big enemy ships eliminated from the game thanks to our spotting, or the equivalent of, I should say. And now here, what with the time of the game pretty much coming to a conclusion because we're not going to let the enemy team sink us and it looks like the majority of our team's big ships are holding back so they're not going to get sunk anytime soon. We're just going to throw out some more opportunistic torpedoes against the enemy reach you here. We're not going to go to guns as there's no need to. I switched on my Hydro here because I saw the enemy Z23 from earlier and I had a feeling they may be trying to throw some sporadic torpedoes down just to try and catch me by surprise. So that's why these are active and now I'm just going to sit in Charlie and prepare to engage the Z23 if it decides to make a play for Objective Charlie. The lead reach you falls to my teammates, our Hindenburg in particular. We spot the Z23 coming into Objective Charlie but as we can see the game's about to end. Time to take a look at the post-game stats. We have the battle over, we can see that our battle performance amounted to a total damage output of 64,186 HP. Moving on to the team scores, we can see that we placed top of our team in terms of base experience earned with 2,098 XP. Our role in this match was to lead our team's push along the eastern flank. Our initial usage of the open space between objectives Charlie and Delta enabled us to spot the enemy Salem and Massachusetts for our team. More importantly, this early vision informed us that the enemy team's eastern flank was undefended and that gave us the confidence to capture Objective Charlie, eliminating the enemy Yagumo along the way. After taking Objective Charlie, we continued to lead the encirclement of the enemy team from the east by advancing into the enemy team's spawn zone. However, our stance went from one of aggression to one of observation. We kept the enemy battleships and the heavy crews were spotted by using our destroyer's concealment to our advantage in the open waters. This gave our team the initiative in being able to shoot first, 
and we supplemented our team's damage output by continuously launching our torpedoes to turn the open waters into a kill zone. This, in combination with the rest of our team taking objectives Alpha and Bravo, plus the support of our friendly Tirpitz throughout, meant that victory was assured. As for our detailed report, we should note that through our spotting we enabled our team to deal 126,133 HP of damage to the enemy fleet. Finally coming on to credits and experience earned, we can see that after additions and deductions, we took away 236,043 silver credits and 10,767 commander experience. To conclude, the utilisation of empty space with Sainella Destroyer is not to be underestimated. Not only can it enable your team to exploit an open flank, but it can also enable you to provide your team with ample vision of the enemy's larger ships. This vision translated into your team having the initiative in upcoming engagements, and potentially resulted in some enemy ships being crippled before they have even contributed to the battle. The while the Observer may be a quiet one, but its lethality reaches far. With that, I've been TX141. If you've enjoyed this video, why not leave a like, comment or subscribe for future World of Warships videos on my channel. Alas, that is all I've got time for today, ladies and gentlemen. Until next time, as always, I bid you fair winds and following seas.